Hello, and welcome to the MGH Department of Radiation Oncology. I'm Dr. Jay Leffler, Chair of the Department. We know you have choices for cancer care, and we thank you for choosing MGH Radiation Oncology. I hope you are pleased with your physician, who has incredible expertise in treating your specific condition, and with a team of talented staff who care for you. Our goal is to select the best treatment option, and then to deliver the care safely and in the right setting. We strive to keep you informed about what to expect from your treatment and to listen to what you tell us. If you have any questions at all before, during, or following your treatment, please ask the caregivers on your team. We are here for you, and we want you to feel safe and secure in our hands. Hi, I'm Judy Gilbert. I'm going to give you an idea of what your radiation treatment at MGH will be like. As you may already know, our Boston location at MGH is in a very large and busy academic medical center. The Radiation Oncology Department here treats patients of all ages who have any of a wide variety of cancer diagnoses, and includes patients who are staying overnight in the hospital, as well as patients who are coming from home. We also provide treatment at other locations, all of them linked by common policies, procedures, and standards. Whether you receive your treatments at our main campus in Boston, at Emerson Hospital in Concord, at Newton Wellesley Hospital, or at the North Shore Cancer Center in Danvers, you can expect consistently safe and high quality care. Your team is always focused on your comfort and safety, and we are never too busy to listen carefully to what you have to say. If you have questions or concerns, let us know, and we will do our best to address them to your satisfaction. There are several members on your care team, all of them medical professionals who have chosen to specialize in the field of radiation oncology. Your doctor, a radiation oncologist, leads a team that includes a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse, a radiation therapist, a medical radiation physicist and engineers, and a dosimetrist. Your team may also include other specialists, such as a nutritionist or a social worker. These specialists are supported by administrative staff who will check you in and assist you in many other ways. Since MGH is a major academic medical center, your team may also include resident physicians and a variety of other students. Your treatment process begins with a consultation when your radiation oncologist and nurse meet with you to discuss expectations for your treatment, explain possible side effects from treatment, which can vary depending on the location of your cancer, obtain your consent, and address any questions and concerns you and your family may have. The next step is simulation, a process in which your treatment team collects visual information about the exact location, size, and shape of the area to be treated. This is information that will be used by them to set up radiation treatment specifically for you. Simulation typically takes place in a CT room and includes taking x-rays or scans of your treatment area. Simulation may require using contrast, a material that makes the clarity of the images more useful for planning your treatment. Contrast may be oral. You will drink it before simulation images are taken, or it may be injected, which is called intravenous, or IV. Depending on the area of your treatment, you may also need a positioning device to keep your body still during treatment. Not everyone needs one. For those who do, it is an important tool for ensuring that your radiation treatments are as precise and effective as they can be. There are many types of positioning devices, some that need to be custom made for you, such as masks or molds. If you require one of these, making it will be part of simulation for you. Other positioning devices do not require custom fitting in advance, but can simply be used during treatment to help you hold still. During simulation, your team will take images, either x-rays or CT scans, and they may make marks on your skin. One type of mark, called a tattoo, is the size of a pinprick and may not even be visible to the eye, but it is useful for precise aiming of the beam during simulation and treatment. Because they are so tiny, sometimes your therapist might highlight it with a temporary mark to make it easier to locate. It's okay for you to wash off the temporary mark. The tattoo will not be affected by washing. By the way, if you've never had a CT scan before, you may be surprised by the amount of noise it makes.
During the several days following simulation, your physician works closely with your treatment planning staff to review the simulation images and plan the most effective and safe dosages and angles for your radiation treatments. The plan will be designed to minimize radiation to areas surrounding your cancer and to minimize side effects as much as possible. During this time, technicians may also prepare special equipment that customizes the radiation beam for your treatment. Once simulation is completed, your radiation therapist will provide you with the starting date and schedule for your treatments. You will receive this ID card, which you will need at check-in for each treatment session. The number and duration of your treatments is specific to your plan and may differ from that of other patients. Your treatments may not be evenly spaced. Again, this is specific to your plan. Once your treatments are underway, your radiation oncologist may change the number of treatments. Please keep in mind that you may need to have some flexibility when it comes to scheduling. If you are undergoing chemotherapy or if you have other scheduled appointments, it will be helpful to provide your therapist with that information so that your radiation scheduling can be coordinated. Let's talk briefly about the basics behind radiation therapy. Radiation refers to invisible energy traveling through space or materials. In nature, the energy radiates equally in all directions, as it does, for example, from the sun. In medicine, we use machines to generate, concentrate, and shape energy into a beam that we can aim at a specific target. If we could see it, it might look like this. This energy can destroy body cells. The purpose of your treatment is to destroy the cancer cells in your body and to do so in a way that avoids harming the healthy cells nearby as much as possible. The radiation beam passes through cloth, skin, and bones. We don't feel it, so it doesn't cause us pain. Now, the devices we use allow us to aim and adjust the beam to target precisely your treatment area. The beam will touch some of the healthy cells near the target area, but your body is constantly making new cells, and healthy cells generally repair themselves fairly quickly after radiation. We use two different types of radiation, photon and proton. Each of these modalities uses different equipment to generate and control the beam. Your radiation oncologist will prescribe the best treatment for your particular diagnosis, photon, proton, or a combination of both. Both modalities are highly effective. Proton beams are generated by a particle accelerator, which is an extremely large, complex, and quite costly system. Only a few dozen of them exist worldwide. Photon beams are produced by a linear accelerator, a sophisticated device that generates high-energy therapeutic x-rays. With either modality, photon or proton, the beam can be shaped, focused, and aimed from different directions to achieve precise and effective treatment. Your oncologist determines which approach is most appropriate for you, based on the location and condition of your cancer. Your treatment plan may consist entirely of one modality or a combination of both. If proton treatment is prescribed for you, please keep in mind that there may be times when the proton system suddenly becomes unavailable for technical reasons. When that happens, your oncologist may decide that it will be appropriate to prescribe photon treatment for you. Regardless of the radiation modality, treatments will generally take less time than simulation, and the beam itself causes no pain. Your doctor will discuss the side effects you might experience and will provide you with ways to reduce and cope with those effects. If you are scheduled for photon treatment, your first session will be what is called verification simulation, or VSIM for short. This is a dry run to double check the settings that were developed for you during simulation. Your participation is required, although only x-rays are taken. No treatment is administered. VSIM is usually scheduled for the day before your first actual radiation treatment. It is an important step in the process of ensuring that your treatment is as effective and as safe as possible. Your next appointment, usually the day after VSIM, will be your first radiation treatment. The device that administers the radiation, a linear accelerator, is equipped with the capability of aiming the radiation beam from multiple angles. Your position on the moving table will depend on your treatment area, and a positioning device may be used to help you hold still. 
An important part of the linear accelerator is the multileaf collimator, or MLC, a high-precision device that enables the beam to be shaped to match the target area, which is often irregularly shaped. Since the beam is often aimed from various angles, the MLC is programmed to adjust the shape of the beam appropriately for each angle. We are able to shape the beam specifically for your target area based on the images that were taken during simulation. Your treatment team will operate the linear accelerator from an adjacent control area. Okay, Mark, we're going to start. Throughout your treatment, your therapist will maintain audio and visual communication with you via an intercom and closed circuit TV. As I mentioned earlier, your therapist determines your treatment schedule and will try to accommodate your needs as best as possible. If you are scheduled for proton treatment, your sessions will either be in a gantry room like this or in one of these rooms specially designed and equipped for site-specific treatments. In the gantry room, you will be positioned on a moving platform which is encircled by the gantry, a large rotating ring which positions the beam delivery system. By adjusting the table and the gantry, the beam can be aimed from whatever directions are needed for your treatment. Your position on the table will depend on your treatment area, and a positioning device may be used to help you keep still. During the time between simulation and your first treatment, your team creates these devices, called an aperture and a compensator, that are installed into the proton system for your treatment. These are made specifically to shape the beam for your target area, and their shape and dimensions are based on measurements taken from your CT scans during simulation. During proton treatments, your therapy team operates the computer-controlled beam guidance system from an adjacent control area and can see and hear you at all times. The proton machine also takes x-rays, which is the first step for each proton treatment. Your proton treatment may be scheduled in this specialty room, equipped with the same proton beam technology as the gantry room, but in this room, the beam is stationary, and the beam's angle is totally controlled by the patient's position. Because these proton beam systems are used for special procedures that require very complex setups, your treatment schedule is dependent on the availability of these facilities. With that consideration in mind, we try to accommodate your schedule, but your flexibility will be helpful and much appreciated. When you visit us for your treatments, photon or proton, you will be checked in by a member of our administrative support staff. Please bring to all treatments the patient identification card we give you at simulation. This is an important part of our patient safety program because it links you to your treatment plans and records. The first part of your treatment session will involve positioning, arranging you in the most comfortable way for the radiation beam to reach the target area while you remain completely still during treatment. Your therapist will help you get into position, often using standard or customized positioning devices. While the combination of your position and holding still may keep you from seeing every part of the room and equipment, your therapist will explain what is happening and will always be able to see and hear you, even in the control area. You will also hear lots of noises. All of the equipment we use, photon and proton, make sounds, especially when parts of it are moving. For example, when the table or chair you are on moves, or when the linear accelerator or proton gantry rotates to change the beam angle. You may also hear buzzing, clicking, or clanking noises, all caused by moving parts of the equipment. You will also hear members of your treatment team entering and leaving the space you are in, checking your position and the alignment of the equipment, and making various equipment adjustments. Just before the beam is turned on, we conduct what we call a timeout. This is an important step in our patient safety procedures. During the timeout, two therapists will cross-verify basic information about your treatment before radiation is allowed to be administered. That's correct. When the radiation beam is on, you will not feel anything. Just as when you have an x-ray taken, there is no pain. When your treatment is done, you will not feel any different than you did prior to treatment, 
You should wait for your therapist to assist you in getting off the table or seat and exiting the room. Here's some advice for making your treatments comfortable and convenient. Unless your therapist instructs you otherwise, you can breathe normally, even while holding still. Also, while you are holding still, try not to count in your head. The amount of time the beam is prescribed to be on may vary from treatment to okay, treatment Mark, to and from angle. one beam angle to the next. Try not to anticipate how long you need to remain still. Just follow your therapist's directions. The treatment rooms are kept at a cool temperature so that the systems function properly. Many of our patients find it uncomfortably cool, so we have warmed blankets always available. If we forget to offer them to you, please ask. We want you to be comfortable. There's also music available to help the time pass more quickly. Again, if your therapist forgets to offer, please ask about music. It's important to plan your schedule to allow for adequate time here. It's probably best to assume you'll be in the department for an hour. You won't always require that much time, but sometimes you might. We do our best to keep on schedule, but in a complex system like ours, and where quality assurance and patient safety are primary goals, there are times when a delay becomes unavoidable. We perform constant safety checks on our equipment, and if a machine is temporarily taken out of service, it could impact your treatment schedule. Also, if you are scheduled for proton treatments, keep in mind that if the proton system becomes unavailable for technical reasons, your oncologist may deem it appropriate to prescribe photon treatment for you. Every week, either before or after your treatment, your radiation oncologist and nurse will meet with you for a status check to review site-specific side effects and answer any questions you may have. Status check is also a good opportunity to discuss referrals to any of the resources and programs that are available to you as a radiation oncology patient at MGH. I'll tell you more about those in a few minutes. If at any time you have questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to ask your nurse or therapist. There is no need to wait for weekly status checks. Once you are finished with your prescribed treatments, your team will provide you with recommendations, special instructions specific to the type and location of cancer you were treated for, and a schedule of follow-up appointments and tests. Throughout your treatment, you'll observe some of our patient safety and quality assurance procedures. For example, the way we use your barcode ID both to verify your identity and to ensure that we are accessing your electronic treatment chart. However, there are also several safety and quality practices you will not see because they occur behind the scenes, such as the routine timeout we take to double check several key items before the beam is activated. That's correct. Quality assurance staff routinely reviews your charts and plans, and physics staff regularly verify that our sophisticated technical equipment is always working properly. Our commitment to safely delivering the highest quality care is an essential aspect of how we work. Here at MGH, there are many resources and services available to help you and your family learn, plan, cope, and live with your disease. I encourage you to become familiar with what we have to offer and make use of any or all that might be useful for you and your loved ones. The Cancer Resource Room is a good starting point here, you will find clinical staff ready to guide you and a wealth of reliable and current information on cancer types, treatments, managing side effects, nutrition tips, and more. The center also offers computers with internet access. You can request a search for journal articles, and you can call to ask for information that will then be mailed or faxed to you. The Cancer Help Kiosk is a dedicated computer-based resource that provides access to a wealth of cancer-related information. The MGH main campus is easily reached by public transportation and has several convenient parking locations. Be sure to ask us about the most current parking options. If you are traveling from out of town, we can help you secure local accommodations. For non-English speaking patients and families, we can provide a language interpreter experienced in our medical setting. Our patients and their families often benefit greatly from other services that are available through the MGH Cancer Center, including nutrition consultation, social services, and chaplaincy. The HOPES program provides free wellness services, education, and support workshops for patients with cancer, their families, and their friends. HOPES services focus on helping you take care of your whole self, mind, body, and spirit, helping you find ways to manage symptoms and side effects. 
Within the hospital, there are several locations you may find useful and convenient. The Ofelder Healing Garden on Yaki 8 provides a rooftop oasis of calm amid the busy clinical environment. Its enclosed pavilion can be enjoyed year-round, and in good weather you can relax among its exterior pathways. Images Boutique, our in-hospital salon, offers a convenient location for salon services and specializes in meeting the unique needs of many of our cancer patients. Our chapel, another in-hospital oasis, is a place for quiet prayer and meditation and for regularly scheduled worship services. You will also find a well-stocked gift shop and an award-winning cafeteria that serves an amazing variety of restaurant-quality meals and snacks. Similar resources are available at our satellite locations. Ask your care team for information specific to your treatment location. And you are always welcome to use the resources based here at MGH. In our department, you'll notice many volunteers. Our volunteers are highly valued team members who are here to help you. They are especially good at helping you get from one place to another within this large and sometimes confusing complex of buildings. Don't hesitate to ask, that's why they're here. I've covered a lot of information in this program, but you still may have questions. A great deal more information is available on the MGH websites, and help is never more than a phone call away. Above all, if you have questions, please let your team know. Although they may appear very busy at times, they are here for you and welcome every opportunity to respond to concerns you or your family may have. It's as important a part of their work as the clinical and technical parts. We also like to know how our patients feel about the care we deliver, so any feedback or advice you can provide is appreciated, whether it's about what we could do better or what we do well. So again, welcome to the MGH Radiation Oncology Department. I hope this program has been helpful. The phone number and addresses for the websites I mentioned will appear on the screen again now. Thanks for watching.